What's up guys, Killer Killer back here with another Empires and Puzzles video and today we're going to be going over the Season 4, 4 Stars uh, Heroes. Um, and I wanted to go over these individually so they'll come out in three parts. This is going to be the 4 star part and I'm not calling them part 1 and part 2 and part 3 but this will be the 4 star one so check this out. The first guy we're going to talk about actually is, I'm going to go with Ted... Ted, 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 Tedco, Tedku. Um, he looks like Goro to me, and so I called him the Goro, uh, the Goro guys, they, like they all with the four arms, and they're, and you know, in, in Mortal Kombat, it's called the Shokin. They're the Shokin Kingdom. So in in Mortal Kombat, the Shokin are the dragon, which is what Goro looks like, and then the tiger, which is what. Um, Kentaro looks like so Kentaro is the tiger one and Goro is the dragon one so this guy would be uh, Like Goro he would be from the dragon part of the tribe um, Which is I think interesting. I, I learned this from the guy who does the um, He does history behind the um History behind what is this guy's page called him shout him out uh History behind the warrior and he does all Mortal Kombat ones. I'm sure he does some other stuff But he does all Mortal Kombat ones. So check that out when you get a chance I, I love that because I was a big Mortal Kombat fan um, So that's why when I saw this I was like man, this is a bite off Mortal Kombat But it just to me that's what it looks like and I've been watching him and uh, like I've been going over um, Goro, Kentaro and um, Some of the other Shokin tribe characters that are in Mortal Kombat but um He's a green monk. Cool. It looks like they're going to hit at 35% passive with the family bonus. So it jumped up 10, 10 damage from the 3 star to the 4 star, which is interesting. Good to know. Um, his passive is the negative 20% for the first three um first three specials this is i think this is a good buff for these guys he's a monk too so right now i think he's well put together he has some offense and he has two defensive passives so he's pretty i think he starts off pretty good um stats wise we have a 1200 and six 667 that's not too bad i would imagine that's a flank or tank stats for four star um average speed deals 320 damage to the target the target gets silenced for four turns. The target receives a hundred percent poison damage over four turns. So this guy's packing quite a bit of offense with some defensive passives. I kind of like that. I think I would flank him. Um, I like the monk so he can reduce the buffs that are going to him. So you can hit him, the damage gets reduced, and he can bypass the buff. Then he can hit you back based off his special going off. And then he has a poison with his attack, so he can get you from three different ways. I think that's really good. Um, I'm going to butcher his name, and it's, uh, let's see, Crippling Grapple. So, I mean, it makes sense. Four arms, he grabs you up, and you're silenced. So, for four turns, yeah, this guy's pretty nice. I kind of like this. This is a very interesting average, um, very interesting average green. I, I like this addition to the four star for green. Uh, I'm gonna jack his name up, so not going over it again. Uh, someone I can pronounce his name's really easy. Mac, Return of the Mac. Except he's a dwarf with two swords. <laughs> I do like the fact he's a two sword dwarf, but he is a fighter. Um, not, and they're not dwarfs. I think they're gnomes. Sorry, I keep saying dwarf. I mean to say gnomes. I think these guys are gnomes. Dwarfs are have the bigger nose. He doesn't have a snoz. I think this is a gnome. So he's a gnome. We're underworld. Gnomes dig and build stuff, so it makes sense. Um, fighter class going to come back to life on you. Going to have a hit with a passive. I wonder if his, I guess it will, because if he's dead and his this passive goes off, it still can kill you. And if he comes back to life, you know, okay, makes sense. All right. His passive is adding, is going to increase that uh, buff for the one turn. So a fire that increases his buffs for one turn, that's good because he could be dead at the end of the turn. And then there's an extra one. I like that. So, and I guess they're calling them halfling wit. So he's a halfling. There we go. So now we have halflings in the game. So they're not gnomes. I would call them a gnome, but they're halflings. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. It's average... Um, average speed. The caster and nearby allies 
counterattack with 125% damage received for four turns. That's big because that's going up. Um, that's pretty. That's pretty good right there. The caster nearby allies get a 25% attack for four turns. So then I guess with his passive, this goes to five turns for him. The first time. No, the first three times. So he can have 25% damage probably for the, every time he goes off. I mean, he probably have it until the next time he goes off. That's interesting. Um, I guess that's a kind of a defensive move. I guess this is who I would tank and put him in the middle so he can protect Goro Jr. And, um, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, his stats are decent. I mean, I would like him to have a little more health. His defense is higher than the other guys, so yeah. Maybe he's the tank of the four stars for that Mac. Okay, I'm not mad at that. That's not bad. That's interesting. Um, let's go to the next guy. Okay. Rock ka mush. Moosh. Rock a moosh. Rock a mush. I'm gonna go with rock a mush. I think rock a mush is right. Rock a mush is a barb. Cool. He looks like a barb. He doesn't have the forearms. He has two heads. So maybe in this side of the... I guess these guys are ogres. I think that's what they're going to go for. I'm calling them Goros. I guess this guy in the Goro tribe is two-headed instead of the tiger and the dragon. So they have a two-headed and then they have a forearm. Maybe they have a two-head forearm going. That's a mutant. But like, like they probably have... So you either have two heads or you have forearms in the ogre or... The Goro tribe of these guys. So, Barb, so he's going to make you bleed. So, there goes one attack, I mean, one offense. He's got the 35 damage with the passive. Let's see what he's doing. He's going to increase his his buffs. Um, that's, or decrease his debuffs, excuse me. Decrease his debuffs by one turn. So, that's the defense. He has two offensive and one defensive passive. Interesting. So, Blind Rage, he's fast, deals 200 damage to all enemies. Each hit has 50%, each hit has 50% accuracy. So, he can hit you, but it could miss. Okay, alright. So, I think, because I think that happened to me when he went off when I was playing against him in the PvE or Season 4. So, he can hit everybody, but it's 50% chance, 50 chance to miss, um... But it's fast, so you know you might get you might get a couple in, you might not. So cool. All enemies receive 180 bleed damage over four turns. This effect stacks with similar effects. Okay, so cool. So he's a barb that bleeds, and he bleeds with his special with his ability. So that's not a new dot, but it's kind of like a Fenrir's dot, or not? Excuse me, I'm I'm messing up names. Sorry. Um. The red, the red guy with the Wolverine claws. Um, I'm jacking his name up because I don't have him. But yeah, so it's like that. That bleed like that. And it'll stack. So I imagine this will probably stack with your victors. It'll stack with your other barbs and stack with your. I can't remember his name right now. Everybody knows what I'm talking about the red five stars. So that's interesting. Um. I can see him being a wing. I don't want him as wing one so the bleed can go ahead and get started. And I guess he'll stack with himself, so that'll be interesting. That's not bad. I like I like I like the build. I like the synergy with the passive of the class there. That's 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 pretty cool. And again, this is no knock to the characters coming out from season from season four. It's just that it just like I said, I'm not pleased with it being so rushed. The characters look look good. Like these guys look good. Let's get into the next one. This this is who I'm kind of curious about. I haven't really read into her. I saw her on the on on the dark files, but um, let's see if I can get it right. Let's see, Zilla Lee. I'm going with Zilla Lee, or Z yeah, Zilla Lee. It'd be Zilla Zilla Lee. That's what I'm going with. Zilla Lee. That's what I think. So she's a rogue. So that's interesting because the five star I want from the this unique dark elf or whatever she is she looks kind of like a sea monster but um is a rogue as well so that means she can possibly you know dodge you know the special another 35 percent passive and then she's going to give you a nice 30 percent increase on her attack 
on her special. Let's see if she has, if she has actually has a special. Let's see. Fishing fish bone blade. So maybe these are the water creatures of the under under underwild. I don't know that, but like it kind of looks like they're water creatures. Maybe they're water maybe they're water elves, not dark elves. They look kind of weird. I don't know. This one doesn't have a nose. So maybe she's different than the other ones, but I don't know that. Fish fish bone blades. It's fast, so I like it already. Deals 185 damage to the enemy on the edges of of the enemy formation. So she's killing your wings. Uh, if there is only one enemy alive, the damage is doubled. So this is basically um, Jabberwock, Jabberwock, but in the blue version for four star. That's cool. I like that. That's what's up. Um, the enemies on the edges of the enemy formation negative 35% defense for three turns. Okay. Okay. I like this. This is this is cool. I like this. I would level I would level some more of the, these guys. Uh-oh. That didn't mean to pop up. Get off. All right, there we go. All right, yeah. That's pretty cool. So 35% decreased defense on the edges. So she could instead of poison you get the defense down. I like that. And it's a nice 30% tack up. That's pretty cool. Yeah. She so far that's the one I like the most. Oh, uh, let's see. I think that's it. One. Did I get them all? Two. I feel like I missed one. Three. Four. I feel like we're missing. Oh, there we go. It's Griffin. I knew, I was like I was like man no. I thought it was, that was five. Okay, Griffin. So this is like I saw a lot of rave on this one in, on on the Discord channel. People were really happy about this. I'm considering Griffin the Invisible Man. Like clearly he looks invisible. He's got to be the Invisible Man. Um, he's a rogue as well. Sweet, walking around with tissue paper, toilet paper on his head. That's what I'm talking about. Um, rogue class so bypass the specials. Another 35% passive. Let's see, another 30% on the initial damage on the special so off the jump he's gonna hit and you see he has lower stats so this guy clearly is probably like one of your wings i would probably put her um the the chick we just went over and him and griffin on the wings of the five star team and i would run it i'd again like i said on the three star video this would be probably my four star team if i could level all these guys up and get them going like just for the simple fact that they have the passive bonus and they kind of have a synergy going with them um Invisible Strike is fast. Deals uh, 340 damage to the target. The attack will always bypass counter attack in reflections. Sweet. Um, so maybe this is who you take against your Ursinas if you're struggling against that. And anybody with Reflect. So Griffin can, can stab Max. So that's cool because he's invisible. Clearly, and he has invisible strike, so the strike gets past the two that can counter it, and it's a nice 30% increase from the jump. That's a big hit. Um, that's interesting. I like I like Griffin. I like I like all this tech. This tech looks great. Um, the cards look really good. Animation. So that is the four star um, summary of the heroes the five star would be longer because there's more of them the three star was long because i was explaining how i'm going to release this but this is the conclusion of these if you have all five of these all ten of the heroes that we just went over in the three and the four stars for tournament wise purposes at minimum i would level them up just because i think their family bonus is going to be op and i think it'll be it's not so much that it's going to be op to the point where like it's Oh my gosh, like I'm I'm getting destroyed by this. It's gonna be OP in the fact that like it's that nick off like for um minions for like that kill shot for that that extra little like bypass of the defense up, defensive down. Like it's it's inches, it's not miles, but it's enough inches when it's five of them on the board that it could be utterly annoying and i think it's going to be really strong so that's where i'm coming from from that and i could be completely wrong like i've been a thousand times but whatever um i like it i think it's interesting and you're also looking at true three passives on these heroes right off the rim so you've got extra either two defensive and one offensive or 
two offensive and one defensive passive. Who doesn't want that versus some heroes we have that are on um, these these teams are naked. Like any season one hero or any of the non-event heroes, I guess all season one heroes that we use don't have any of this stuff. So there you go. Uh, that's this one. Kill, kill it out. Peace.